Thank you again to our guests from the Ukrainian Americans of New Mexico. We touched on a few more issues during our 20 minute plus minute discussion about the invasion and our response to it. You can watch that full interview on our New Mexico In Focus Facebook and YouTube pages. Now let's welcome back the Line Opinion panel back one final time to discuss an issue that's been flown a bit under the radar according to data obtained by Searchlight New Mexico. The state mistakenly paid out $106 million in pandemic unemployment aid or PUA as it's known. And now it's demanding that money back from the citizens who unknowingly received it. Now, is that fair? And how could such a major error happen? Let me throw that first to Dee Dee Feldman. Senator Feldman, how could it happen? And why are we asking for money back here? You know, it, it's, it's, uh, it's obvious that the Department of Workforce Solutions has been overwhelmed mm -hmm. uh, by uh, claims during the pandemic and also uh, new funds coming to the state through the various federal uh, through the cares act for example uh and other and other funds yep. uh but they're really it, th this seems quite incompetent uh in my view and really uh, a terrible injustice mm -hmm. uh that they are now asking people to pay back uh money that was sent to them by their own error um, I, I mean, it is the Department of Workforce Solution that calculates how much people are due mm -hmm. in unemployment. Uh, individuals don't calculate that themselves and figure out whether they're being overpaid or underpaid. And then to be suddenly, um, suddenly um, faced with a $13,000 bill, I mean, it is an outrage. Uh, for the uh, Department of Workforce Solutions, mm -hmm. I think. Mm -hmm. And uh, people, I think, are justifiably uh, uh, mad about then having this money that they supposedly owe deducted from future checks right. that they are due. Um, yeah. So, uh, you know, it's, it's just another one of those things that's going to make people hate government, mm -hmm. even though... Uh, they're 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 the recipient of funds from the government. They they are uh, now going to be left with a very sour taste in their mouths. Yeah. Jessica, when you think about, I know you know this. I'm not news to you, but you know, Department of Workforce Solutions. Their own numbers show 17,136 people. That's nearly 20 percent of PUA payment recipients have filed waivers asking to be excused from paying back the money. Over 17,000 people. So let me just say, when I first read this Searchlight piece, um, just blew my mind. And I will say this about the, that particular piece of reporting. The original number for overpayment was somewhere close to 240 million, not the 106 that they just recently corrected it wow. to. So even then it seemed really extreme. And now even with the 106 million, it's just, it's a crazy number, but you're right. Um, you know, we're talking about real people here. We're talking about, um, real people with families, and this is gonna affect them greatly. Um, uh, the last report I read said something like 14,000 people are still waiting for waivers to be exempted from repaying this. And it's just huh. dragging on. It's just dragging on. That's wild. Hey, Merritt, the same issue as you know is playing out in Arizona, Michigan, New Jersey, Connecticut, lots of other states. Should, you know, should some of the flame blame fall on the federal government for failing to be specific enough with the criteria for PUA money? Well, I, absolutely. And I, I think the the root cause of this, there is just so much money out there. Yeah. It's a ridiculous amount of money out there that went to states, flooding aid, started with the last administration, continued with this administration. New Mexico is actually one of the slowest states. We couldn't even figure out how to spend all this money. Right. I mean, that, that should tell you something. The situation is almost ludicrous. We're printing money. Um, or just manufacturing it electronically, I guess uh, you could almost say. Mm -hmm. um, so the notion of going down to the lowest level, the households where it matters, where this is keeping people um, out of poverty and feeding their family, to claw it back from them when we're a state who couldn't even figure out who was going to spend the money, whether it was going to be the governor or the legislature, right. and that whole fight, and paying lawyers to work that out in front of the Supreme Court, to claw it back from the individual household to me, um, that's just, it's just me. Right. It's just me. No, I don't think, I don't mm. think it's just you. A senator, interesting, Rhode Island, as you probably know, is waiving all overpayments. 
saying the money is, quote, long gone. <laughs> you know, in our state right now, more than 2,000 waiver requests have been denied. I, I just, I don't, yeah. where are we headed on this? Well, how did that happen? Right. <laughs> how did that happen? Well, you know, I think that clearly uh, New Mexico ought to just give a blanket waiver mm -hmm. uh, as a result of these overpayments, particularly since we are, if not the poorest state or the uh, the lowest income state, at least in the top three mm -hmm. uh, of the lowest income states. And yes, there's a lot of money, but yes, there's a lot of unemployment and there's a lot of need right. in New Mexico as well. So all the more reason for um, the Department of Workforce Solutions mm -hmm. to, um, to uh, enact a blanket waiver and then enact for the public an accounting of where this money uh, went to um, and what they're doing with it. Mm -hmm. Merritt, I, I just, I, oh, I'm so frustrated with this topic because wh why aren't we, as Dee says, we are flush right now. Who are these people inside Workforce Solutions turning down these waiver requests? That's what I want to know right off the top. What is well, the criteria? Like, like, How do they decide who gets one? Who decides who doesn't get one? We don't know any of that at this point. Right. That's true. There's very little transparency on this. And mm -hmm. then my question is, what is the state going to do with the money? A again, we have not been able to figure out how to spend the, the uh, deluge of federal funds we've gotten. What are we actually, what substantive purpose are we going to put this, these funds to? Right. Um, uh, again, I, I think a blanket waiver, the funds are gone. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and we saw this um, in Congress with the Paycheck Protect Protection Program, you know, two cereal box tops and, a, and um, uh, an application put out in crayon and your Paycheck Protection Program waiver got approved. Wow. I think New Mexico could easily do that here. I, I, I got to say, you know, in a poor state where money is just a very tricky thing, if Workforce Solutions wants to take it to its natural extent, and start issuing warrants and get, bringing people to court to get this money back, I say good luck to them. You know, this, this ought to be a very interesting deal. Uh, go ahead, Senator. Look, like they got a thought there. But they don't have to. They don't have to do that. All they do is deduct it from, their, from future unemployment right. checks. Right. So they still have the upper hand, and uh, they don't have to take affirmative action. All they have to do is just withhold the money. Mm -hmm. Now, the Department of Workforce Solutions, I think, bears some checking. Um, they are. They have an acting secretary and have had an acting secretary right. since their previous secretary, Bill McCamley, left the left the state. Not just left the job, but left the state very prematurely. So um, I think I think this bears some some inve further investigation. And I really applaud Searchlight New Mexico. Yeah. Uh, thumbs up to them. Thank you for mentioning them. Thanks again to our line panel. Amazing as always this week. Now be sure to let us know what you think about any of the topics. We had a lot of them you can comment on. <laughs> Get to us on Facebook, Twitter, or our Instagram pages.